Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be continuing our series on the Airbus with the Airbus A320. Now it's really, really hard to make a video about the Airbus A320. There's only about 30,000 of them out there. So what I thought I would do here is explore things a little bit differently and maybe show you some things you did not know about the Airbus A320. Starting today with the MCDU. So for those of you familiar with the Airbus A320, you're very familiar with the basics of programming our lovely flight computer here. Uh, waypoints, setting your airports, setting your constraints and everything like that. But what you may not have known is there's a couple other features that are actually surprisingly useful that you probably don't use, but you wouldn't mind knowing. So let's go float down here real quickly here. Let's think about the ones we always use. We've got a direct to page, a progress page, performance page. I guess we should probably take a moment to go ahead and calculate all these things or a moment. I got to do that on the computer, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. We have our init page where we're going to go ahead and define where we're going. We have our page where we dial in all of our fuel weights and stuff like that. We have the data page. What is the data page? The data page is actually a really neat page that not only allows you to go ahead and monitor different components as well as different systems, but it allows you to import custom data. Yes, you can actually dial in your own waypoints and your own navigational aids into the FMS and then directly reference them when you're filling out flight plans. You're sitting here going, oh, that's actually kind of useful. What's the trick? Well, let's say we want to create ourselves a stored waypoint. I can come over here and press waypoint. It says, what would you like to do? Now, for me, I was goofing around with this earlier. So let's go ahead and clear that out. Let's say I want to go ahead and create a really basic one. I'll call it ACDEF. Now, when I click here, it'll ask me for my latitude and longitude, which I can dial in. I'm not going to try to figure out any of these latitude and longitudes in a hurry right now. But I imagine if this were uh, somewhere in Connecticut, so uh, we'd have something like this. I will do 42.0, kind of a thing like that. Then we do the slash. And then, of course, uh, we're dealing with east here, so it would be negative. Uh, we'll just do like 72.0 or something like that. And you can actually dial that in here. Yeah, I got to do the decimal, so it's going to be a little grumpy at me when I do it. But the reality is you can now design your own waypoint, which means if I'm in my flight plan mode, and let's say I'm in Hartford and I want to go ahead and set next waypoint, I can actually do this. Of course, remember, I have not finished defining it by just coming over here and actually clicking this button here and actually saving it into memory. You can actually add your own waypoint. So if you want to say my house, you could design that as a new waypoint in here. Now, that's one fun detail that you could do with this particular device. And again, I fiddle with that a little bit. So I don't love it because, again, I don't really need a lot. I'm not like doing targets or anything like that. But there's another thing that I find very useful and another place you probably have not explored, and that's the radio navigation button. Now, believe it or not, our Airbus has some really slick tricks. It has the ability to actually capture VORs, specific courses of VORs, and it can actually do ADFs. Now, where I'm parked right now at Bradley International, it's going to be really hard to detect any ADFs on the ground. So, of course, we'll fiddle with this instead. What you'll notice here is it gives us a little slash for entry. So, of course, you're sitting here going, oh, I want to do Hartford VOR. So you type in HFD and you click here. And you will notice it automatically captures the correct frequency. Isn't that awesome? Now, it gets better. Let's say I wanted to enter a frequency that does not have an identifier. I can't remember the identifier. Maybe I want to do Westover or Barnes or something like that, which is BAF. Instead, what you can do is you can actually press the slash and then enter the frequency directly. In this case, uh, for us, it's a 113.00 here. Now, because I've got the slash, it'll attempt to enter the frequency. Then it will look up the correct for a place, which in this case is Barnes Air Force Base. Now, one of the things that's so cool here is you can actually manually dial in a course. So if I wanted to do, actually, that makes no sense at all. If I wanted to do like 180, I could actually dial that in there like that. And if I actually come up here, and let's say I switch to a VOR mode instead of doing it in a regular mode, you can actually see the exact position of my target. You can see there's my course selection there. It's a 180, it's HFD. It gives me all my VOR data up at the top. And it actually gives me my usual information. Now, what's crazy here is because I'm in this mode, I can actually have the aircraft fly this up for me, which is a little bit handy. Obviously, you'd be fitting with your little hunting knob quite a bit to get it to behave here. It's a little different than it is on some of the other aircraft, but it still gives you that basic fundamental capability to it. Uh, one of the things I like, too, is you, know, you can dial in your ILS frequencies manually in here, and you can do any of those other components as you go. Now, let's go back to navigation mode for a second. Now, you'll notice I pressed the button for VORD, and you can see here I've got Hartford and I've got Westover VOR pretty much ready to go. If I zoom out just a teeny tiny bit, uh, we should be able to see some of these other ones. Now, one of the things you got to know here is this is VOR DME only. If you pick something that is not a VOR, such as a TACAN, by the way, it will not appear on here. So even though I've got my SEP, the other thing you probably notice is it does not 
highlight any specific item that we have. So like, even though I've selected Harford View War down here, it's not gonna give it a special pink circle or something to let you know that that's the one that you've selected. Now, if I wanna get rid of that at any point, keep in mind I can shut that, but while we're looking at it, if you wanna see something really quick, if I go to arc mode real quickly here, which is kind of conventional, I'll clean this out to make your visions a little bit easier. If you were to actually come over to these two switches, you could turn on the two VORs and actually see them on the screen. So if I were to switch back to nav mode, for example, you can actually see arrows that point directly to the locations of these different pieces. Now this is starting to get a little bit cluttered. So when you're starting to play with these switches like that, just be a little bit mindful of it. And again, you can see it very, very clearly here. And actually you can see HFD of the OR right there, as well as the arrow that is now pointing towards it, which is a very, very powerful tool in the event you're in a situation where you're unable to be able to use conventional navigation. Maybe you're having an INS or GPS problem. The next thing you probably are not aware of or you have not played with is the one that says Sec F Plan. This one gives you the ability to create a secondary flight plan, which is actually awesome because it allows you to actually create a flight plan as you're flying the other flight plan. Now you're sitting there going, what? Let me show you. So I'm going to go to secondary flight plan. Actually, before I do that, let me just explain. We're going from, of course, Bradley to BWI here. Let's say I want to create myself another flight plan. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab a copy of the active flight plan. Now, as soon as I do that, what you will observe here is that it grabbed the entire flight plan here. You'll also notice that it is in white, which is telling us that it is not actually using this particular component. So, for example, I notice here I've got Moderna. Now, if I were to come over here and click on this, you will notice that it actually allows me to edit this. So if I were to go to return, let's say I don't want to do Moderna here. Let's say I want to do JFK for some reason, which would be kind of an interesting choice. But if I were to treat this as if it's exactly the same, by the way, make sure it says the word sec at the top before you get carried away with this. If I were to type in JFK and just come up here like that, you'll notice that it popped that waypoint in. Well, let's go ahead and delete Moderna real quick. Go ahead and delete that. I'll go ahead and I'll delete my flight plan discontinuity. And you'll notice everything else from my entire flight plan is ready which also means, let's say I'm anticipating I'm gonna have some trouble when I get down to the ground. Let's say maybe there's a different runway. So let's just come in here. I can go to arrival now and let's say, uh, maybe I'm just gonna be dealing with uh, a runway 33 left or something along those lines. So I can come here, actually, let's be 33. Yeah, we have 34. I'm not going insane. I know which runway it is. And of course, if we needed a specific transition or something, we could do that. I could press insert. And you will notice it actually updated my entire piece. Now, the thing I love about this is I can now go through here and delete any discontinuities or anything, make sure it's the way that I want it. And now I'm ready to go with this secondary flight plan basically at my beck and call. Now, if I come back over here to F plan, switch to primary flight plan, obviously these flight plans are incredibly similar. You can see this is my conventional flight plan and nothing bad happened to it. As a matter of fact, you can see clearly here that my destination is still runway 28 and you can still be sailed Moderna VOR sitting inside there basically waiting for us. Now let's say we're cruising around and we want to switch to that flight plan. If I press the SEC flight plan, do you see this thing that says activate SEC? As soon as you press that button, you are going to command your aircraft to immediately go to your secondary flight plan. But before I bang that button, I just want to point out the fact that you have an init page for the secondary flight plan and you have the perf page. You have the ability to do all of your performance calculations set for this aircraft inside of your secondary flight plan independent of it. Now, obviously, for takeoff, this doesn't make any sense. But if I had a special landing, maybe I want to do a flaps three landing versus a full flaps landing, I could have all those things programmed into my SEC flight plan page. Now, one of the cool things here is this is all basically ready to go. If I wanted to go ahead and take a look at it, I could press this button and review it. If I wanted to go ahead and delete it, I could press this button. But let's say I want to transfer over to that secondary flight plan. I could now come down here and press this button right here. And the moment I do that, my entire aircraft's flight plan has instantaneously been updated and we didn't even feel the little bump, which probably helps because we're not flying. Now, the thing you're probably curious about, the SEC flight plan button here, is when you press it again, do you notice what happened to our primary flight plan? It got eaten. And when I press secondary flight plan, do you notice that it's completely empty right now? That flight plan is gone. If you really, really want that flight plan, you would have to have come in here and actually saved that flight plan before you actually did any of your flights with it. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to quickly reload it. But these secondary flight plans are wonderful, wonderful little buttons that give you that ability to basically go back and adjust those things. So as you can see, there's a couple little things inside this that are actually really, really fun. In our next video, we're going to be taking a look at some weird problems you're probably going to encounter when playing with the autopilots. Enjoy.